Welcome to Lifespring Church. We hope you enjoy this message. To find out more about Lifespring Church, head to linktr.ee forward slash Lifespring UK. Well, thank you, Rob and guys, um, for leading us in our worship this morning. And um, the choice of songs was... Um, it really connects with, really with what I'm wanting to speak about, which if we could just have the heading, please, um, Amy. Um, we're going to be looking at foundations, and I'm talking today about Jesus Christ being the main foundation of our lives. And uh, most of those songs were all about him. Hallelujah. So about 20 years ago, we were having dinner in our home with my sister and her husband. And uh, Caroline put something circular on our kitchen table, and it just rolled. And she did the same thing again, and it just rolled again. And it was only then that we'd really noticed that the table was sloping. Um, And upon further investigation, we found actually the whole extension was sloping into one corner. So the next day we looked outside and there was a major, major crack. It was an inch wide um, between the extension and and the house. Um, Which explained why for a number of months I kept filling in this crack on the inside and didn't know why it kept reappearing. We had subsidence. So we moved out for five months while they sought to repair the property and um, had the extension piled uh, to the extent of 14 metres. That's a long way down. Um, So we thought all was good, and we moved out, uh, and um, then a a number of months later, I noticed one of our gutters was leaking. And I went further up there, went up the ladder and had a look, and it had pulled apart from the other gutter. Further investigation, more subsidence. Same extension actually was pulling away. The piling had been inadequate. In fact, it had made matters even worse. And so we moved out and two years later, we moved back in again, having had the extension piled to a depth of 23 meters this time. Not just one pile either, a number of piles. um, Because the previous piles, They'd just gone into a soft void, and so we're actually pulling the extension and making it worse. The cost, well, fortunately, we'd paid, had our buildings insurance. It would have been cheaper to knock the whole house down and start again. 20 years ago, it cost over 300,000 to fix underneath what needed to be fixed in order to make that house safe again. And you might be saying, well, the pastor, no, that's all very interesting, but why are you telling us of your woes from 20 years ago? Well, it's a clear illustration of the importance of foundations. Not just any foundations, the right foundations, at the right depth. And of course, the best thing is to start with them and build on top of that. We had to redo what had already been done. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at six Christian foundations listed in Hebrews 6. And that list may well surprise you as we look at those over the coming weeks. And of course, we're not talking about foundations for physical buildings, but spiritual buildings. We, as God's people, are God's house. We are his temple. He comes to live in us, not the pavilion, And it's we who need those strong foundations in our lives. I believe God wants to build a big house here. James mentioned last week about 50 life groups by the end of the year. 500 people attending regularly. That will be amazing. But it's nothing compared to what I believe God wants to do. Just the beginning. But to build a big house, we need strong and we need deep foundations. In fact, the strength of the foundations determines 
the size of the house that can be built. So shallow, inadequate foundations, little shallow. But strong, deep foundations, skyscrapers, can be built for him. Hallelujah. And in Hebrews, and we're going to be looking at that next week, we're told God will give us a building permit once he's checked the foundations are in order. So that's what we're going to be doing, checking that these foundations are in order over the next few weeks. But I want to start off, um, I start off this series by looking at the most important foundation of all, which is Jesus Christ. You see, it's all about him. It's for him. It's through him. It's to him. It's in him. He's worthy of it all. And that's why I love those choice of songs this morning, because they were all about him too. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10, tells, says, tells us this. By the grace of God, Paul says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is our foundation. So let's have a look to see what that really means. Because actually Jesus being our foundation is radical. Even extreme, some would think. We get a clue from the Gospels when Jesus was asking his disciples who they think he is. And the disciples mentioned, well, some think you're Elijah, some think you're John the Baptist risen again. And, but then Jesus gets a little bit more specific. And he says, yeah, but, but who do you say I am? And in verse 16, we read, Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. In other words, this isn't just a natural process. You've received revelation to understand the truth. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Of course, we know Peter the person, contrary to our Catholic friends, what they think, was not the rock. The foundation on which Jesus was going to build his church was the confession that he made about Jesus. You're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And it's on this revelation, Jesus says, he's going to build a strong church. So strong, the gates of hell aren't going to be able to resist it. Hallelujah. You see, he is the foundation. Acts 4, verse 11, the disciples, I think it might be Peter again, actually, he says, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. What a declaration. What a claim to make. That's building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Others may reject his claims, but we believe Jesus, the one who died, the one who was buried, the one who rose again. He is the foundation of our faith. There is no other name who can bring us salvation. That's why in a few weeks' time, Easter's coming, and we'll be celebrating the, resurrec the resurrection. It is so important. It is foundational to our faith. Jesus really died, and Jesus really came back to life. Some so-called churches don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. They are to be pitied. If Jesus didn't rise, what hope do they have of eternal life? The resurrected Jesus is our assurance. To be honest, the foundation they're building on is pretty flaky because the resurrection of Jesus is a fundamental truth, foundational truth for the Christians 
and in which Jesus will build his church. He's the son of God. So for me, the virgin birth is important too. Yes, born of a woman, but impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Wow. What an amazing miracle took place. So Jesus was born not just son of man, of Mary, but a son of God. But even, we read, he existed in heaven before he came to earth as Jesus, as the son of God. Isn't that incredible? And he came and he was revealed as man. This is the foundation of Jesus Christ we're building on. The one who died was buried and rose again. And when we make him our highest priority, and when we choose to lay down our lives for him, as we've been singing, and follow his commands, then he really becomes the foundation of our faith and the rock on which Jesus will build his house. So strong, as I say, that the gates of hell won't be able to overcome. Hallelujah. There is no one else to compare with Jesus and his claims. Any other foundation and the house will topple. Maybe Jesus' most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount... He's teaching about his kingdom. And you see, it's a completely different level. Time and again, he says, you've heard it said, but I say to you. Actually, Jesus is interpreting some of the, much of the Old Testament. You've heard it said in the law, and this, but I say to you, he's laying a new foundation. He's teaching on the importance of forgiveness, on the importance of loving, on the importance of giving. He's teaching on heart attitudes with regard to money and sex. And often they seem to be, they are contrary to the the wisdom of the world. And at the end of all of his teaching, he says, therefore, if you've heard my words and you put them into practice, put them into practice, you're like a man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. I think we've got the text there, um, Amy. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. How did you put that foundation on the rock? By hearing and doing. Hearing and obeying. And we build a strong, we're built on a strong foundation. So challenging. Don't deceive yourselves. He goes on to say, those that heard and didn't do, Well, their foundation is just sand. And when the storms of life come, they're going to collapse. But for those of us who build on the rock, when the storms of life come, and we all face storms, don't think because I'm up here I don't have any challenges or never have had any challenges. We all have challenges. We all have issues which we have to face. But when our our faith and and our, our lives are built on the foundation of Jesus... We can stand firm. Hallelujah. Knowing who he is and what he's done for us. In Peter, we read, uh, Peter 2 verse 4, As you come to him, Jesus, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house To be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, see I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe... The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Peter is painting a picture here of Jesus, not just the foundation, but actually being the most important stone in the foundation, the cornerstone. I looked this up in 
uh, Wikipedia, and it tells me a cornerstone, should have asked Rob, really, a cornerstone is the first stone set in the construction of a masonry foundation. It is the rock upon which the weight of the entire structure rests. All other stones will be set in reference to this stone, thus determining the size and position of the entire structure. That cornerstone, which Peter says is Jesus, directs our lives, shapes our life. Everything in our life is, is weighted down on that cornerstone, which is Jesus. I read this as well. I've got a little quote for you, Amy, thank you. At that first stone, the cornerstone, as that first stone, the cornerstone provides the very definition and basis of what is right and wrong, what is true and what is false. So Jesus defines our reality. Not the world, not the latest, um, the latest concept regarding morality or whatever. Jesus defines our reality. He's more than a Sunday saviour or an occasional companion. He is the lens through which we filter everything. So much more than a historical figure. The one who saved us, shed his blood for us and forgiven us. And we seek to interpret everything through him as we build on his foundation. We look at what did he do? What does he say? What are his commands? He being the cornerstone needs to shape our viewpoints in life. That's why we need to read the Bible, by the way. It gives us a few clues. And this cornerstone is Jesus. Peter says he's precious to those who believe. That's why we love to worship. It's not just warming up time. For me, almost 10.30 is the most important part of the meeting. So we come to worship him. Come to show him our love. Come to give him our praise. Come to make much of him. Hallelujah. He's precious to those who believe. And so we want to lay down our lives for him too. That's why, to be honest, I get offended, really offended. I'm sure many of you do. When you hear the name of Jesus blasphemed, he's precious to me. And I know he is to you too. But notice, he's also a stone that causes men to stumble. A rock, previous translation it said, that causes offence. And isn't that so true? Especially for the religious people of the day. They were so upset and offended by what he was saying, they couldn't stand him. And as we know, in the end, they executed him. But it's the same today. They don't like our crosses hanging around our necks or our fishes on the car. They don't like our views on marriage and sexuality. They don't like Christmas being about a saviour being born. They prefer it to be a, a winter festival. And it seems some of, us, some of our police don't even like us singing gospel songs on the streets either. I don't know if you noticed in London the other day there was a, um, a special constable who said it was against the law, which is nonsense. Hopefully she's been shown the truth. They don't want us to share our faith in the workplace. Why? Because Jesus is an offence to them. But to those who believe, he's precious. Why should we hold him in? Why shouldn't we let people know? Why shouldn't we tell people? The, the Christian faith isn't meant, it's not a private, personal thing that you just keep to yourself. No, the whole world needs to know. He's come to save. He's come to deliver. He's come to bring freedom. One last scripture for the day, for today. One of my favorites, actually, from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Paul, again, he's saying, Consequently, you talking to a Gentile church, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, as we all were at one time, but fellow citizens with God's people. See, Jews, God's chosen natural people, but the spiritual people now, we're also fellow citizens with them. Built, uh, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building, this is the church again, joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. 
That's the promise. That's the vision that Paul had. That the church of Jesus Christ, believing Jews, believing Gentiles, one new man being formed to become the temple of the Holy Spirit, where he wants to come and dwell. We were looking on the Truth and Love series. You know, we were saying how important it is not just to look at one verse, but to look at all the verses which the Bible has to say. And this is, a, this is an example. When we look at the verses about the foundation, we realize, wow, Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the foundation. But also we read now, the church is built on the apostolic and prophetic ministry as well. So what does that mean? Well, some suggest it means it's built on the Old Testament, the prophets, and the New Testament, the apostles. And I'm sure that's important and that's a um, fairly interesting viewpoint. But I want to make a different point. Churches with apostolic and prophetic ministry at the foundation are strong churches. And they are foundational ministries. As an, apostle, as an apostle, Paul refers to himself as a master builder. It's a gift of an apostle. It's strategic. It's, it's helping shape the future and working with prophets to be catching the, the heart of God. That the church at its very base expresses God's vision, God's dream and God's purposes for the church. A church with an um, a, a apostolic foundation. I pressed the wrong button. Um, the church with an apostolic found, foundation um, is different to that built by a pastor or a teacher or an evangelist. That gift set, apostles and prophets, is so important in the foundation. And over the years, we've received so much apostolic ministry, and even now indirectly, if you like, from Pastor Caesar, and it produces a church with good foundations and vision. And when those foundations are absent, we can very easily end up with beautiful teaching centers, expounding the word of God so eloquently every week. And people come to hear that they need to come to do. Or we could end up with loving fellowships of believers who love and they care for each other, and, but they become very inward looking and, 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 and just looking on themselves. But when there's apostolic and prophetic in the mix, the church needs to begin to turn outwards and see God's doing an amazing work building us together, but we're blessed to be a blessing, as we were reminded again today. And when we don't have that apostolic or prophetic in the mix, we can so easily lose that radical edge, that sharpness that sets us apart from the world. You see, Jesus' vision is a church um, built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, with him being the chief cornerstone, it's going to stand out. It's going to shine like a light in the darkness. It's going to be a, a beacon of truth and love. And people will be drawn to it because he's there in the mix. Hallelujah. We are being built into that temple where he comes to dwell by the Holy Spirit. So we see with Jesus being our chief cornerstone. And apostolic and prophetic ministry, having been received and responded to, the church becomes that building where we are all fitted together. All the various gifts and ministries which we have. And they're all so important. Everybody's so important. And in him, or through him, we're built to become that dwelling, a temple where God lives by his spirit. What a privilege. What a calling the people of God have. So life spring, we're going to check, maybe oh, Rob, you'd like to come up. We're going to check our foundations over the next few weeks, but let's start by checking, is Jesus the foundation? Is he the one that we're building our lives on? Is he the one that we're prepared to submit to, come under and respond to his teachings and his commands? And we say, we're going to be those which which don't just hear, but we do, and we build our lives on him. And let's expect to be built into a temple that impacts Reading and beyond with the gospel of Jesus.
And let's remember, it's all about him. It's all about him. He has no rival. He has no equal. Nobody like him. And the church is here to spread his glory and to make him known. Amy, if you could just stick up the life group ones, please. Oh, you're done, thank you. Um, Just a few questions to think through this week. Uh, But let's apply, let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Holy Spirit over these next few weeks as we look at various other specific, more, more specific foundations in one sense. Lord, I want to build my life on that solid rock, which is you, because I want to shine for Jesus everywhere I go. Amen. Can we stand together? And pray, hand over to Rob, and Angeline will close the service later. Lord, I thank you that you came. I thank you, Lord, that you were born, that you lived a life, that you chose to die for us. You were buried, but you rose again. And Lord, I thank you for that certain foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Lord, would you help us to live our lives on that foundation? Lord, that you become our greatest priority. And making much of you is what we live for. Thank you, Lord, we can bring our love, we can bring our worship through our songs. Pray, Lord, that that our lives will reflect what we sing. And you'll receive all the glory in the worship. Because you are so worthy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching this message. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. To find out more about our church, head to linktr.ee forward slash LifespringUK.